Uh, good morning, uh, audience, who is listening to this on YouTube. Uh, my name is RJ, I'm going to be your DM for the next however long this takes. Uh, wonderful players, if I can get you guys to introduce yourselves uh, from the top down, that'd be great. I mean, I get to go first. Um, hello, I'm Wiz, uh, I'm playing Rai. Hello, Who's I'm Foster. <laughs> Hello, I'm Foster, and I'm going to play Teal Tiger. Hello, everyone. I'm V Wild, and I'm going to be playing Little Lynn Stagehand. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Lizzie Bell, also known as Liz, and I'll be playing. Uh... Oh God, I forgot my character's name for a second. <laughs> Tiffy Tutu, and her accompanying uh, guide guardian adult. Heck yeah. <laughs> So, the the four of you, uh, I say four, obviously not including uh, Tiffy's current guardian, uh, the four of you did, way back last year in October, you guys took part in a corn maze, and apparently you were the only ones to finish said corn maze. So, uh, Jacques Macab, the person who created the corn maze and the mayor of the town that corn maze is in, Halloween Town, which now has a place on the map. Go check out the map if you haven't already. It's on the wikia. It's so good. Wiz put a lot of work into it. Um, Yay, Wiz! Yeah, so, so Jacques Macab, who is the creator of the maze and the mayor of Halloween Town, invited you all back for a dinner party uh, to get to know you better. Um, what... You guys have some interesting reasons for attending. Do you mind saying what they are, exactly? Uh, he's only going because he's pretty sure that Lynn will be there. Aww. That kid is getting a hug. Uh, I would say that Teal has definitely... Ha uh, Jack left a uh, striking impression on Teal, so he's definitely intrigued, and he also wants to be there because he knows that Lin will be there, and he is very interested in seeing how they will react. Oh, yeah, she is definitely going to be gunning for you. Uh, <laughs> Lin's got a couple of reasons. One, she's going to see her peck and kids, which is great. Two, free food, and also she's going to meet Teal again, and seriously, she has got some questions for that guy. <laughs> and another reason, which I'm not going to disclose. <laughs> oh, ho. Interesting. Oh, goody. Um, I don't know if Tiffy has any big reason except for, oh, she just likes everybody here, and it was a fun time when she went to this cool maze last running and running. Um, she wants to see everybody again, and she told some people about what happened, and they also seemed interested, and, you know, an adult guardian is good, generally. Yeah, generally speaking. Uh, so... What are you talking about? There are plenty of responsible adults here. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> Have you seen this party? You guys are disasters. <laughs> I am. We resemble that comment. <laughs> yeah, so so you guys all arrive in your various different ways, uh, potentially taking the train like you did last time. Um, mm -hmm. And when you arrive, you are immediately escorted by... Go ahead and just roll like a straight intelligence check. Oof. What uh, is my intelligence? What is my intelligence? Haha. <laughs> First roll of the day. <laughs> oh, no. That's a nat one it's early. from Liz right there. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. Okay, so hilariously, <laughs> Rai doesn't recognize the particular skeletons that escort you. But, uh, Teal, you and Lynn both do. These are some of the skeletons that you guys uh, came across in the corn maze. And you recognize one of them in particular because they've still got a half melted face from a particular <laughs> acid arrow. <laughs> or pick. They don't, they don't seem like, too, too messed up about it. <laughs> so, you think it's probably okay. But. <laughs> 
So yeah, so you guys... Lynn is not going to (laughs) comment. That's fair. So yeah, so you guys are escorted to uh, Shark's Manor, um, which apparently is on the opposite side of town that the corn maze was on. Magical bullshit. (laughs) Fucking magical bullshit. And you are greeted upon arrival by Jacques and Asclepius. And they both look stronger than the last time you saw them. And Tiffy, you in particular notice that those fine, minute cracks that you saw in Jacques' bones aren't as prominent. Oh, she looks very pleased about that. And kind of just sings happily to herself. (laughs) Nice. Aww. So you are you are greeted and oh god what voice did I do for him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you don't listen back to the previous recording. Uh, <laughs> well, hello, hello there. Welcome to you all again. It's a pleasure to see you all. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. Lynn is grinning. It is like fucking great to see you as well. Fantastic. And you are, my dear? And he, uh, Jux looks at, uh, uh, Luz's escort. Um, <laughs> Tiffy's oh God, escort. Practiced... Names. <laughs> yeah, Tiffy. Names. I don't worry about it. Uh, I, I should have practiced a voice, but I did just wake up an hour ago. So, um, <laughs> what out the there? Tiffy's Sorry. escort. <laughs> Tiffy's escort just smiles and says, My name's Darla. Um, that was dollar dollars just fine. I am Tiffy's a uh, guardian. Nice to meet you. And she just hands out a hand for Jocks to shake. Uh, he does take it, but he doesn't shake it. Instead, lifting it to his jaw and pressing a kiss against her knuckles, because he is a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> so. Aww, so yeah, so Escopius uh, steps forward a little bit and goes, uh, if you'd like to all uh, just follow me, we'll take you through to the dining room. And so he leads you through the house, and it is uh, like like it was previously. Uh, but contrary to potential uh, opinion, the dining room itself isn't majorly fancy. It's more of a... It's not as big as you'd expect from a face hole either. It's more smaller and... Informal. Almost almost elegantly homely. Hmm. And so like it's it's not a big table either, so it's it's big enough that you guys will have like space for your elbows and whatnot, but small enough you guys can all talk fairly easily. And you're all shown to your seats and the skeletons from before come and they bring some uh entrees, like little nibbles, before the main course. Oh, that reminds me. Um, as we're walking to the room, I think Lynn's going to realise it, and she's going to go in her hammer space for something, because she brought something. She brought something. And she does pull it out. Uh, she's she's going to give Asclepius a pie. Oh boy, what oh. flavour? Uh, Winterberry. And she she spent a lot of work on this. She did. I did roll for it, and she did get a dirty twenty on it. Hell yeah! She tried. <laughs> she tried really hard. She probably set the first one on fire and had to ask Reggie for help, but she did it. Peckin' food. Heck yeah! <laughs> Skippy looks very pleased because he himself is also a baker, um, and goes, "Well, that's just fantastic. Uh, we'll have that with the dessert course, I think." And he will, he will yeah. hand it off to one of the skeletons to go put with the rest of the desserts. Lynn did good. This is good people skills. Uh, you know who doesn't have good people skills? Rye. <laughs> Rye does not have good people skills. And I would encourage everybody to roll an insight on Rye. Oh, boy. Ooh, oh boy. What the heck uh, is all my characters' insights? I want too many characters. <clears throat> we gotta protect this little kid. He's a baby. He's a teen. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> L- L- Lynn's clocked. Lynn is clocked. Uh, she loves this small child. 
Sharks, what's your intelligence? But not much intelligence. What's in your insight? How do you have a higher insight than your husband? What the heck? <laughs> so, so we've got okay. a, we've got a twenty five from Lynn, a fourteen from uh Teal, a thirteen from Jacques, an eleven from Asclepius, and a nine from Tiffy. Well, I think with that spread, everybody except Tiffy yeah, would notice that Rye has not said anything since they got off the train. Or since they got to the door. Or since they came inside. And he looks supremely uncomfortable. Oh. Oh. Lynn's so going to offer her tail. He's got ah! a new shirt. It's got a big star on the back. Oh. I love this pecking kid so pecking much. And Lynn is going to offer her tail as just like a comfort item. You can you can hold it. It's like She, okay. she knows sometimes you need a hand to hold and well, her hands are a bit clawed at the moment, but you can have her tail. It's fluffy. He takes it and holds on to it. Pretty tightly. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jacques, uh, from his from his place at the table, uh, he folds his arm and sits back in his chair and, and looks across at you and is like, So, how have you all been? What have you been up to since I saw you last? Hey, well. who wants to go first, eh? <laughs> Should I just roll a d4 for it? <laughs> I, if we can't decide, I think Teal is gonna... Can I... Can um, Lynn do something a little... Lynn's going to do something. She's going to look directly at Teal and go, Yeah, how have we all been doing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, business is booming as usual. Oh, yeah. You'll have to tell me more about that later. I'm, I'll admit I'm interested. I'd be pleased to fill you in you know, on it. At which point Asclepius <laughs> is going to ask... So, uh, what is it that you do, sir? Uh, <laughs> I'm a professional item retriever. <clears throat> <laughs> Got any any family heirloom stashed by a group of unruly bandits? That's my job. Got some miraculous item that some nasty cultists have put their hands on? That's also my job. And of course, those qualification applies to various different types of missions. That's a fourteen from Lane for something. Yeah. <laughs> Lid was trying to very much hide our reaction to this because it's just like, yeah, she knows more. <laughs> <laughs> She's put a hand in her pocket on that one. It's just like, yep, yeah, she knows more than this, you picnic. I'm just gonna roll <laughs> the quick insights from both the Sclopius and Jax because they're filthy, filthy gossipers. Uh, that's a new <laughs> nineteen from the both of them. <laughs> oh my god. I think at this point they're just like looking between the two of you with big grins on their faces. (laughs) If it weren't for the laws of this land, if it weren't for the laws of this land. (laughs) I will say, um, Tiffy's uh, caretaker is like listening into, like, she's she's considering what Teal said because, oh, she loses stuff all the time and she doesn't want it to get into the wrong hands. Um, Tiffy is also listening, but she's also drawing on a piece of paper and she's going to try and pass it to Rai <laughs> because um, drawing is fun You're, and the, the food hasn't really come yet. Has the food come yet? No, there's some, like, some entrees okay. on the table, but we've not started the main courses yet. Okay, so she's just drawing on one of the spare uh, napkins and um, is just going to try and pass it stealthily to Rai. And it's just a, p- a really 
<laughs> it's a, it's an okay picture of a dog. It's, I'd say you manage it. You just quickly slide it across the table while the people are distracted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to roll him in perception to notice that? Or do I, um, or, or something, because she's deliberately throwing it to Rye? Oh, I I'd don't know, because can... the intent is to hand to Rye without the others seeing. I, I'd say you'd notice a piece of paper bumping into your plate. The others don't notice the handoff, but you notice the paper is there now. Cool. And he's definitely definitely going to, to, to take it and look at it and then look over at Tiffy and um, he doesn't have a, a mouth. Um, so he, he emotes completely with his eyes and he, he sort of, the bottom up upturns just a, a little bit. And then he sort of pulls out his um, his scarf a little bit and stuffs the drawing into his scarf. Nice. Aww. That remains the cutest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are pecking adorable and I'm going to adopt them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Trying to think of if uh, Miss Darla would say about anything about this. Um, ooh! Miss Darla will turn to uh, V, oh, not V, Lynn, and say, Well, you seem very um, uh, um, curious. Uh, may, may I ask what job you do as well? I didn't really get a full profile of everybody here when Tiffy ran to me about the maze that she uh, went to. Uh, yes, we have, we haven't been introduced. I've I've met two of our other guardians, all, all peck and delightful, on, honestly. And uh, Lynn's gonna lean over with a um, hand out and go, "Detective Little Lynn Satan at your peck and service." Oh, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Dala. Uh, as a as a as a caterer, uh, you must be talking about Bo. Oh, oh wonderful. <laughs> yeah, she is. Oh, absolutely, and Lynn is actually slight, slightly fluffed out in softness, and she's like, she is fantastic. She, honestly, wonderful family, all of you. <laughs> she kind of like, it's a smile, but it's the kind of smile that just kind of tucks it in, like, oh, shucks. Mm -hmm. That kind of, oh, you expression. Y yeah. <laughs> Lynn, Lynn loves all of you. And she's going to glance down at Tiffy and go, and how are you, eh? Come on. What have you been up to, eh? Hmm. You been out of trouble? She just grins and it's a sound of, like, leaves rustling. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with a bit of bells in between. Very similar to the bells that they ring during Animus. Aww. Cute. That is very cute. It's at this point that the starters arrive. Um, it's a very, very nice looking uh, lobster bisque. Ooh. And some homemade bread. Heck yeah. Rai's gonna go for the bread first. And he's just sort of gonna kind of nibble on it like a little gremlin. <laughs> Mood. Yes. The more we learn about this kid, the more I adore him. <laughs> Tiffy, do you like lobster biscuit? Yeah, she does. <laughs> okay. Just gotta check. Sometimes a kid just doesn't. It do be like that. <laughs> All right. I don't know how to eat this, but I'm pretty sure Lynn will have like gone to a library beforehand and just looked up how to do <laughs> fancy dinners. <laughs> she, she is a stagehand. They all have communal dinners, but she doesn't know etiquette. But I just have tried. Lobster biscuits is a soup. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. It's a soup. Yes, Lynn so. knows how to eat soup. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have a spoon and you have some soup. I think you can figure <laughs> yeah. it out from there. <laughs> Could it be any clearer? <laughs> he was a soup. She was a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, very uh, how's Rai doing now? Like Lynn is gonna keep on like glancing at everyone because 
A, she wants to know where Teal is at all times, but also she wants to know about her kids. She wants to make sure they're safe and happy and, if need be, create a distraction so that they can feel more comfortable. Well, he's definitely not let go of your tail. Um, but he's just sort of still just nibbling on the on the bread or he's poking his face with it and bites disappear anyway. Picking fantastic, you wonderful little guy. <laughs> She's going to give him a little head ruffle, just like, but I'm going to see if she can do it stealthily. It probably won't work. We are at a table full of people, but she's going to try. Steph- Eleven. Well, it- it's definitely noticed by uh, by uh, Asclepius and Jacques, at the very least. Yes. Yeah. Um, she doesn't want right. to... Oh, I'm going to make you him go. roll it. I'm going to make him roll a, a deception to try and not Oh god, have I done something bad for the pecking kid? <laughs> no, he um is trying really, really hard not to be obvious about how happy that made. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and I think Lynn probably even felt him sort of lean into her hand a little bit. Oh, she would die for you. <laughs> Please not right now. Please I'm begging you not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn kills over at the table. No. no. God, okay. <laughs> Not yet. Oh my goodness. Kill over in the dessert. What? <laughs> it, it's my. We need to finish the meal. Yeah, finish the meal. <laughs> damn it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're surviving the meal. We are surviving the peckin' meal, even if it's. No, I'm not gonna finish that. Okay. So. Uh. Uh. For the sake of actually being kind to the hosts, uh, Lynn's actually going to turn and go, and what about you two? Have you been up to anything recently? I mean, besides organising this wonderful thing, thank you for all of this. It is great. You know that, like, kind of almost telepathy that really close couples and siblings have? They, like, Aww. they like share a glance, and it seems to be an entire conversation passed between that. Uh, and Asclepius will go, Yeah, we, we've had a pretty good animus, in all honesty. Through a citywide party. That was fun. Oh, Yeah, that does sound impressive. That must have been incredibly busy to uh, sort out. I mean, I, I know a bit about organising, but <laughs> an entire town. Woo! Well, <laughs> Jacques will uh, elegantly fold his hands and go, Well, it does help when the entire town is very accustomed to working together. Mm. Aside from that, we had some minor problems on the borders with some uh, needle blights, but they've been fairly calmed now, thanks to my dear husband. This guy is just like, oh, it wasn't that hard. Ah, oh, shucks, he says, and he yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Does Lynn have any idea what those things at the border are? I mean, you guys can go ahead and roll nature if you'd like to try and figure it out. <clears throat> I want to do nature. That. Oof. Uh... Well, nature is not one of her strong suits. Yeah, that's mm. good. <laughs> it is one of her strong suits now. <laughs> wow. Honestly, Apparently honestly, so. those two, well, those one two on scan. Oof, oof. <laughs> All right, so Teal knows movies. nothing. Um, <laughs> no. Rai knows. Know, uh... Wild. Lynn knows. I think Lynn actually went to the library before all this just so she could read up on Halloween Town because she needs to know all. She is so confused by so many things. Nature's an intelligence check, right? right? Yes, it is. Okay, because I'm making dollar roll for this as well. <laughs> No, okay. Fucking no <laughs> so yeah, so Teal and Della, you, Della, you guys don't recognize the term. Uh, Tiffy, you you vaguely remember some kind of plant, maybe. Um, Lynn and Rye, you guys know that the needle blights are awakened plants, um, with like that are sentient, um. Most consider them a blight, but it seems that the people of Halloween Town are not like most in that regard, being that their disgust is just a minor annoyance. Hmm. 
I see. Well, good thing you got it handled, hmm? Must be, let's see, I, I think. Yeah, you, you, you're magic, right? Um, Mr. Asclepius, you, I believe you've said, yeah, you've shown your magic, so must take quite some skill wrangling those sorts of things, hmm? Oh, it didn't take much magic at all. All they needed was a little bit of a contract. Mm. <laughs> Lynn's going to mull this over while drinking the soup, because soup! Free food! Soup. <laughs> what does entail a contract with a plant like that? Wait, wait, shit, she doesn't know shit! What, what, what does... <laughs> Uh, uh, retcon. What entails a contract with a being like that? Oh, well, they wanted some land, and we gave it to them, basically. Oh. Our land tends to be particularly popular with uh, various different assorted monsters. So, we have quite a few contracts like that. We gotta make a roll. Oh, ho. You guys oh. noticed absolutely nothing, but the second you said contract with monsters, yeah, there was a, a slight shift of Lynn drinking the soup, but you won't have seen because she looks as though she's just really enjoying the soup. You're lucky you got a 14 and not an 11, because I'm telling you, <laughs> if you would have been fucking on that, but Actually, instead she's just making the chat box. <laughs> Asclepius does notice that. Because he has a passive perception and a passive insight of crazy high. <laughs> <laughs> Jock's perception is that too, damn. I keep forgetting Jock's has a higher insight than just Clappy's does, god damn. <laughs> Squeaky grandparents know all. <laughs> Sneaky grandparents do know all. It comes with being old. I still want to know how old those pecking guys are, because seriously, they are fantastic and I love them. I mean, you can you try and ask. Ryan does <laughs> not want to that. know. Ryan is just fiddling with the, the with the tablecloth and dipping his bread in the soup. Fair enough. And I'm pretty sure Lynn has got it ingrained that you don't ask people about their age. She probably has had a few incidents with that with the state hand family. <laughs> It'd be like, like that sometimes. <laughs> yep. Sometimes you get yeeted out a window when you ask inappropriate questions, and that's okay. <laughs> God, I love the stage hands so much. Mood. <laughs> um, Dalu asks, wow, that is, you know, quite a thing. How long have you been sort of in charge of this town here? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to look up the, um, political histories of Halloween Town just as yet. I only really came into it when I uh, moved here and got into a relationship with Jacques. I, on the other hand, have been here since the town's inception. Mmm, a founder. Okay. Wow. Uh, uh, role history, anyone who cares to know this, uh, I'll let yes. Della roll with advantage. Okay. Come on, Lynn, don't let me down. 21! Damn. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn, Damn, Lynn. Teal That's is not getting those them. rolls. Teal is not getting those rolls. No. Right. So that's a... Uh, that's 17. 18. Yeah, okay. Because she's got plus one. Fair enough. All right, so uh, so yeah, so Dala and uh, Lynn would know Halloween Town is old, dude. Not as old as, say, Toontown or Happiest Place, but old. <laughs> All right. Lynn is not gonna. Well, there is an eye widen, but she she's not gonna ask. But there is that. Holy peck! What the peck! <laughs> all, the, all the tunes at the table know tunes don't have an upper age limit <laughs> they just they, they keep on trucking until they don't they keel over from the old age <laughs> yeah 
but it is mildly impressive considering Jacques, uh, uh, shall we say, lack of physical presence or, or lack of physical strength. Mm. He's got shit constitution. He don't <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, hmm. That, I don't think Tiffy would remember that. Actually, hmm. Now she'll do it at the end. As I, okay, um, I think Dala would do a performative like look around the room and say, "Well, have you been in this place for as long as this town? It's a mighty interesting uh, abode you've got here, and a very humble dining room." Um, and she is just going to do a perception check. Go for it. Just generally, um. Mm. If to see if there's anything of note that she could talk about. D one, D twenty plus that one. Give her the date. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so three things immediately jump out at you. Uh, one, there is a painting uh, above the door that you guys entered of Asclepius and Jacques and. Someone else who you don't recognize. Oh. Um. There is. Uh. What's the word that I'm looking for? Uh. It's it's like. It's like a mirror, but it doesn't quite. Look, right in terms of what it's reflecting. Um. Like a like a funhouse mirror, kind of not right. Kind or of, a... but it's more along the lines of it's reflecting everything in the room. But there's a few things in the reflection that aren't in the room itself. Okay. Oh, I'm curious about that. I am. I am. Cur- I am making the eyes at that. <laughs> well, Dada's definitely is, um, and... but not 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 too neatly. Yeah, and and the last thing that you notice is that all the doors are carved with this repeating rose motif. The same one as is on uh, a pendant around Asclepius' neck and on Jacques' bow tie. Oh, they match. And I've completely forgotten the original question that Dala asked, so if you don't mind repeating that. Yeah, same, I'm trying to remember it. (laughs) Um, It was something else, I think. Yeah, like, is the house as old as uh, Halloween Town? Uh, Yeah, Jacques Jacques will... um, Jacques, like, waggles his head in that kind of, eh, sort of, uh, way, and goes... They're about the same age. We all popped up at the same time. Mm. She just nods at that. Um, and then she goes and points at the painter. Oh, and, what, and what about this little ditty over here? It's a mighty fine um, brushwork you got up there. Ah, yes. I had that done some 75 years ago. It's myself and Miss Clepius, as you can see. And the other person in that is our dear friend, Sir Boggart. Oh, a knight. It was Sir Boggart, right? Yeah, Sir Boggart. Um, yeah. Uh, Sir Boggart is fairly shapeless in design. Um, it's kind of this amorphous mass wrapped up in, um, in sackcloth. But oh. there is a face made out of the folds, and... Go ahead and roll... What would this be? Go ahead and roll insight, I guess. Okay. Uh, All of us Mm. or just... um... Anyone who's paying attention. Oh, (laughs) both of them now. Go, my children. (laughs) Nineteen! Lynn's doing good on the rolls. She's going to do terribly later on. Lynn's getting all the rolls that Teal is not. (laughs) Yeah, like, I got yeah. one in the beginning, and that was it. <laughs> Damn. 
I think to explain that, like every time Lynn isn't talking, she is just kind of looking at Teal. Like she's probably across the table. <laughs> she's probably across the table from him because she's just like, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking later on. The second that we're able to, I am dragging you somewhere and we are having a little chat. <laughs> no, I want the drama on the table. I want to see not, the drama on the table. She's not going to do it in front of the kids. <laughs> no, that's a not one from Tiffy. Oh, bless you, you're the yeah, okay. I'm the, oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, Tiffy, you don't notice anything, but then again, you are kids, because so, it does kind of make sense. Um, Dala and Teal, there's something about that grin that just doesn't quite sit right with you. Rye and Lynn. Mm -hmm. That's a grin, but it looks more like a snarl. <laughs> All right, Lynn's Lynn's gone protective mode now. It's just like okay, that isn't a good thing. She's now she's now going to protect these guys. If she hears anything about this person, she's going to find out everything. She wants to protect these two. She she cares about these two. She doesn't know much about Asclepius and Jacques, but she's already fallen into yeah. These guys are mine. Rai is frowning and he's not trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's cocked it too, kiddo. All right. And a... Rai's actually going to get up from his seat, crawl <laughs> under the table to the other side, and then go and have a closer look at the painting. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> go, God bless children and their inquisitivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You... you... Get up closer to it. Um, it's, as Dala said, magnificent brush work. Uh, you aren't too familiar with different painting techniques, but some bits look like they were not put on with a, uh, a, a brush. It's all very nice paint. It's not faded at all despite its age. You'd probably suspect magics in play with that thing. Um, it's at this time as well that the, the skeletons come back and clear the dishes and bring out the next course, which is, uh, it's a very large, uh, uh, meat joint of some <sighs> description. You don't know what it is, but it looks fucking tasty. Um, and mm. different roasted vegetables, um, gravy, <laughs> potatoes, hoshbang. I ate and now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, damn. If it if it helps, I've not eaten today, and I'm driving myself insane with these food descriptions. <laughs> oh no! Fantastic. God. Uh, I'm I'm gonna roll a deception. Just it's not a serious deception, but it's just like okay. You hold it in. Uh, wow. In fact, in fact, I'm gonna roll it at disadvantage on this one. I'm gonna roll it at disadvantage on this one. <laughs> Never mind, you hold it. I'm gonna yeah, roll deception, yeah. gets a nineteen. I'm gonna roll a disadvantage, gets a twenty-five. <laughs> God damn it, Lynn. She is this is more food than she has seen in ages. I mean, like she has kind of been skipping out on a couple of stagehand dinners. Hmm. But oh my god, she loves this. There is food. <laughs> Mm. Rai's going to go back to his chair, but he, he, again, is doing it by crawling under the table to the other side and then pop back up. I, I love Rai. I love Rai so <laughs> much, dude. Is. I love Rai so much, dude. If we weren't at a table, Lynn would be giving you a hug so hard your bones cracked. It's like, oh, you are adorable. Right. Don't Ooh. even know if he has bones. <laughs> okay, so that's spotted by uh, whatever that stealth thing is. Definitely spotted by Jacques and Asclepius, and anyone with a passive perception of fifteen or higher. Yeah. Uh, so this is what Ryan's Tiffy Tiffy brought out a pocket knife from uh, <laughs> Hammer's face because she saw the nice food and was like, "Oh, I need to bring out the nice stuff." <laughs> and Dora just caught it in the corner of her eye, and so. Is trying to gently make her put the knife away. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay, that let's so get much. a peck and knife. Actually, Lynn would probably give them a peck and knife, but she hasn't. But seriously, who gave this kid a peck and knife? 
<laughs> it it should also be noticed as uh as as the meat is carved when it's put on your plate it's cooked to how you prefer it despite the fact this is oh. probably several different <laughs> levels of cooked you know? and it's all the same joint hmm. you don't know how it works but it does it's probably magic don't question it Right. There is the soft mutter of peck and magical bullshit, but it's appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it should also be noticed that Sleppius doesn't partake in any of the meat. So he's mm. vegetarian. The pie is going to go down well. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm gonna... Oh, sorry, you go. Oh, I was just going to say that Rai actually is um, eating with a little bit more enthusiasm now. Nice. Yeah, I think that Teal will, however, comment that uh, while this is an extremely lovely place, it does quite contrast with the last time we did met. <clears throat> Considering that this is like a bit more humble than the last time where they were meeting in like the big throne room and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, one must have some form of facade, when one must look proper and all oh, that's such the dying the 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 what's the word? This is RJ fucking up. <laughs> we love you, RJ. I forgot. What is the? I'm a writer. I should know the words for this. <laughs> What is language? What is language? Yeah. English is three different languages in trench coat. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the main hall is rather more ostentatious than the rest of the house. It's where all the uh, more proper gatherings occur. I didn't think it's suitable for this kind of setting, so here we are in the dining room. Aww. We have been invited into the home. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I love this guy. That is that is probably going to be my main phrase in this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is so nice. <laughs> in fact, actually, Darla investigated the room. Everyone else hasn't really. I mean. I gotta admit, Lynn was probably focused on the zip food because <laughs> she she has many priorities, and one of them is food. That's fair. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna see if she clocks the mirror. No, she, she does, does not. <laughs> she does not. Well, <laughs> we finally got the bad roll, guys. Yeah, lucky streaks run out. Too focused yeah. on the food. <laughs> Yeah, it, Honestly, makes sense. It, 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 it's food, man. You, you guys might notice it's a little more bloody. Or like hers is like other people's is probably cooked quite well. Hers is strangely not very cooked. She's uh, just she's just chowing down. Hilariously, rice is rare. Yeah, hilariously, rare. Jacques' meat is also blue. <laughs> Please. Please. This man's Can a we just skeleton. Eat the food cooked. <laughs> this man's a skeleton, dude. <laughs> oh god, okay. Lynn has dietary requirements now. I she doesn't like them, man. but she's got them. <laughs> oh god, okay. Um I feel like um hmm. <laughs> I feel like Dal is kinda just like because she's talked to Jacques and um, uh, Eclepius, and she's talked a little bit to Teal and to Lynn. Um, but she's kind of now just, <laughs> is now looking at Rai and kind of mm -hmm. understands that he's not really talkative right now. Um, but okay. she will still nevertheless say, um, so how are you doing, dear? Uh, are you doing all right? He sort of stops eating and um, shrinks down in his seat a little bit and gives a single nod. Um, I'm going to do 
and <laughs> fuck. I'm going to do an insight check cool. to see if I can get the vibes of if if Darla can do get the vibes of Rai's age because sometimes you just get very short tunes, but sometimes you do indeed get a child. You're playing hey, the game, or are they a child or are they short? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a very <laughs> common <laughs> thing <laughs> happens. Uh, insight. Rai is That's legally baby. Six. <laughs> That's six. Six. <laughs> you are not sure. He is short. That is that is definitely true, but you can't tell with that. Okay. Because uh, I feel like her, her first initial thought would be like, oh, they he might be a, a resident of uh, Halloween Town. And then she was like, oh, no, wait, he came off the train with us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and so she's not quite sure right now. And she just smiles and nods and continues her, her meal. Many questions, no answers. No answers. In the uh, interest of expediting, because I just noticed we're almost an hour in, uh, you guys mm. wow. finished the, the main course, move on to desserts, uh, and Jacques stands up and holds his cup up and goes, I think a toast to the conquerors of the corn maze. Lynn's gone fluffy again, and she's raised her glass because it's like, oh yeah, that that's that's sweet. Ryan picks up his cup and just sort of holds it just above the surface of the table. <laughs> Aww. Out of curiosity, what is in these cups? Uh, you. It looks like some kind of red wine, but. Uh, for Lynn, it tastes like your death coffee. Yeah! <laughs> for the kids, it tastes like some kind of squash, maybe, whatever their favourite flavour is. It's probably still wine for Dala. Um, for yeah. Sclepius, it is tea. And for Teal, it is whatever your favourite drink is. Hmm. Uh, I would say for two. I haven't. <laughs> You're... Cutting me off guard. Uh, favorite drink. Uh, I would say that it's like some fancy non-alcoholic, like fruit cocktail or something. Hell yeah, mm. we take those. Rise is black. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you know this is good because Lynn doesn't have to sneak her coffee into it because she has a canteen and it's just like every time she has a drink that she hasn't made, she just puts coffee in it. That's not she, she needs the coffee, man. She needs the coffee. <sighs> so Jacques right, is a toast. A takes a sip. Mm -hmm. His cup falls Little from his hands. It. What the peck? Mm. Okay. Lin he is takes a step instantly. back and collapses. Right. Lin's okay. over there instantly. Medicine trigger. Yeah. Let's see. Right. She is literally just vaulted the second he dropped. Uh, medicine. Dang it, she is not good at medicine. Please. 23. <laughs> not 20. 20. All right. Holy Lynn is shit. Really locked. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'm, shit, I was, I was going to say, like, Teal maybe, like, had, like, the head turn when the glass was dropped, and he is also going to shock now. Yeah, Asclepius has also stood up, uh, looking yeah. very worried. Uh, L Lynn, with that nat 20, um... <laughs> you, you move Jacques onto his back, and as, as you're rolling him over, your, your claws feel something under his shirt, and you pull it open, there are flowers starting to grow from his bones. What the ever living peck is this? Yeah, Lynn is just kind of. Her fur has been fluffy all this time. Yeah, it's an outline, and now it's slightly darker because it's just like this is wrong. All right. It's at this point that uh, Asclepius kneels uh, and immediately is pressing his hands against Jacques' ribcage and attempting to to pour cure wounds into him. Um, 
can Ryan come over and help? Right, you come over. Um, but you get over just in time to see. Oh shit, that's almost max damage. To see the flowers suddenly grow thorns and thorn vines lash out at Asclepius, catching him across the face, and he reels backward. Um, where the heck did I put his sheet? I've got too many sheets! <laughs> All right, Lynn is literally just yelled at Rai and Tiffy. All right, kids, back now. This is what the sassafras and peck is this? Go ahead and roll nature. I was gonna roll nature. Six. That's she does not know peck and shit. Rai got a dirty twenty. <clears throat> Okay, dirty 20 from Rai. Uh, cool. Oh yeah, I just realized this thing can do maths for us. That's that's useful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1d20. Uh, <laughs> maths. That one and that one. Uh, first one's Tiffy, second one's Dollar. Okay, well Tiffy not knowing makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so none of you guys quite recognize what this is until... Rye, you suddenly twig it. And I don't remember what. Okay, yeah. Asclepius has also twigged it. And he goes, Oh no. This is Blood Blue Mashvidal. Rye is going to kind of hiss. Yeah, that's a fair reaction. Um, because uh, Asclepius picks him up and starts moving him to uh, a chaise lounge uh, just on the side of the room. And as he does, he explains that Blood Bloom Ashvidel causes a sort of reverse Hanahaki disease in those who ingest it. Uh, it only takes effect if they love someone very much and it strangles them with flowers. Normally it takes from a couple days to a week to uh, to take effect and kill someone, but well, the flower's are already starting to grow from his bones and that doesn't look good to anyone. And Asclepius looks very, very upset. With good reason! Okay. Then can't do anything for him, but it's just like, was it was it the drink? And she, she's going to, I think she's going to go over and try and, would that be an investigation on the drink? Because like, oh, Peck, if it's in the drink, that's actually kind of concerning for everyone. Uh, yeah, you, you can roll investigation. Right. Um, while you do that, that's a... <laughs> oof. while you do that, uh, uh, Rai, you would know that Blood Bloom Ashfell does have a cure, and it is a plant known as Curse Root. Right. Uh, Lynn, you, you, you pick up the cup, and uh, it's, it's, because it was dropped, it's, I think it's kind of spilled, but you notice tiny little seeds, almost, in, in the bottom of the cup, and spilled out with some of the liquid. Alright. So, someone's done this to him. Okay. Ryan's um, gonna go up to Asclepius and sort of just sort of pat his side and sort of he's still keeping his voice really, really low, but says Do you have curse root in your pantry? Uh, uh it, it takes Asclepius a moment to realize what you're saying, because he's very shaken right now, and he goes, uh No, no, but it, it grows on the side of town. Uh Alright. Uh, Ryan, Ryan's going to take that information and go over to Liam and go and sort of give her a little bit of a, a shake. Pick. Yeah, kiddo. What, what is it? Uh, we need to get 
He's still sort of keeping his voice really, really low. We need to get a plant from the other side of town to fix it. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Do you know? Do you know what the plant is specifically, Rai? It's a very keen nod. 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 Right. Nod. Nod. All right, you're a picking fantastic kid, and I love you. And she gives you a little kiss on the forehead, and she goes, "Okay." Um, all right. With uh, Scorpius's permission, I think we need to run and sort this out of this pig. In fact, actually, should we leave Asclepius alone? I mean, pick whoever did this. Lynn's actually going to yeah. investigate his cup as well, if that's okay, because it's just like, she's cottoned yeah. on that it's at the bottom of this cup, but she's now actually concerned that this might be a group assassination attempt or something. Yeah, no, you you, you take a look at all the cups, and now that you know what you're looking for, you, you know that uh, it's just in Jacques' cup. It's not anyone else's. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, like, uh, so Till has been, like, kind of attending Jacques, but obviously, like, he doesn't know exactly what's going on with the plants. But he's going to turn to Asclepius and say, okay, now let's rewind. Who brought this cup? It, it was, it was just in, in the cupboard with, with the rest of the dishes. I... He yeah. takes a moment, he presses his hands against his face, uh, uh, visibly trying to calm himself, and goes, uh, Miss Stella, do you mind staying and, and helping me with Jacques while the others go and get um, the curse root? Yeah, Nala nods. Um, but before she, like, stands by, she is going to look into the mirror, um, just to see, because if the idea of an assassination attempt did cross her mind, and the mirror was showing stuff that wasn't in this room, so she's kind of suspicious if it's, if it's also people. Just a just a wild thought that she had, so she's gonna make a let be investigation. Uh, sure. Okay. Eight. There's no people in the mirror, but you do remember seeing some kind of shapeless mass hovering over the table uh, the first time you looked in the mirror. Mmm... Okay, that's fun. Um, Dala will then step over to um, the Eclepius and say, I think your friend has come to visit, and she'll look back up at the painting. It should be noted, it's not the same kind of shapeless mass as Sabogat is, because Sabogat does have a form. This thing didn't. Okay. Hmm, I... And it would be changes as her something is here, and I don't like it. But I will stay here, and you go. And she kind of like ushers Tiffy off with with a, a concerning amount of trust in this six year old. <laughs> Little look after him. She is not a responsible adult. Why is why the doing this? Oh, don't worry. She knows you're not a responsible adult. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Rai's really keen to get going, but he sort of looks up at Asclepius and then down at Shark and then back up at Asclepius and it's like, he's gonna reach into his hammer space. Cool. And he's gonna put out, pull out a little stick with a single leaf. Um, and he's gonna go over to Jacques and he's gonna cast Healing Word. He's just gonna whisper, hold on, and poke him with a stick. Oh. Okay. Uh so the the healing magic fails, but again it rebounds. The the vines lash out and like claw against your hand and you take 5 points of slashing damage. Wow. All right. Rise actually right. going to drop his stick and whimper at that. Alright, so Rai, you're getting scooped. Asclepius, you're getting scooped, Asclepius immediately, like, 
uh, Crest is a quick hand against your wrist and will heal that, because <laughs> his, his cure wounds automatically does at least six points of healing, so, but yeah. <laughs> Eric. Right, you are you are being hugged, you are being scooped, you are not near that thing anymore. It's just like, seriously, why did you do that? Get back! Uh, he uh, whimpers in response to that question. Okay. You, you, you're just, you're being hugged, okay? Okay, so Teal is going to turn now to the rest of the group and say, now that we have someone that is going to stay with us, Clavius, I think that it's best for us to just get going and get this sorted as soon as possible. Agreed. For once, I'm actually agreeing with this guy. Okay. All right. Where is it in town that we need to go? We can probably make it. I mean, I, I have no idea how big this town is. Peck, we need a map. So, uh, uh, Rai, you know that both Bloodbloom, Ashradel, and Curse Root grow in desecrated graveyards. You guys also know that the other side of town, where the corn maze was from the first time you came, is one such graveyard. Oh, joy. I don't know where the maze was. Alright, we're going to a pecking graveyard. Whoop, whoop. This can only end well. All right, so time to waste, in kids, move it or lose it. And Lynn did pull something out of her hammer space earlier, but she's kind of abandoned it now because she was scooping up ride. But it was a shock blanket that she was going to give to Asclepius. It's just like, yep, yeah, we haven't got time for that pick and pick. Let's go. Cool. So. You guys make your way across town as fast as you can, which it does take you a hot minute because, as Lynn pointed out, this is a big town. Uh, and also, the the way it's laid out isn't, like, great for navigation unless you're living there for a while because it is full of, like, dead ends and blind corners and it's kind of a maze. But you eventually do get over to the other side of town um, and you find the graveyard. And who identified the needle blights? Lynn uh, and Rye, right. yeah? Yep. Mm. Yeah. You found the needle blights. Oh, fun. It would appear that this is where they were contracted to have land. <laughs> you, you know how Lynn can have tattooed Grawlix in the air? Yeah. The, the entire time we've been going on, we've been leaving a trail, and right now the air is just like the air and the ground around her feet is lovely little Rolex on it because she's like a picking course yeah so the moment you get within 60 feet the, the blights start stirring and go boy who's there what do you want just passing through just passing through we need to get something we won't interfere with you in any way shape or form but we do need something from the area that you're in uh, it's important for someone that is very important to all of us, including you. So, hi. Roll persuasion. Kick. <laughs> she is not persuasive. She's you a little You roll. You took yeah. your roll. Easy. Uh, that's hey. Nice. <laughs> okay. Why did you say she's not persuasive? That's a plus five. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, dude? Uh, you've met Lynn. She swears. It's seriously. Naturally, she should not be so good. <laughs> but mechanically, <laughs> mechanically, she's probably picking all right. But it's just like seriously, pick. The the blights are a little perturbed because you were very rude, but they do calm a little bit and they go, "What you need? What are you looking for?" Uh, good question, right? Right. What was the name of the thing again? Curse root. Curse, Curse root. root. All right. What you need curse root for? Uh, Time-sensitive matter. You got it? Yeah or no? I mean, we do, but we can't get it. Get it? And they like uh, hold great. up. They like hold up their hands, but they're not hands. They're just sticks. They're pointy Lynn sticks, but axe. they're sticks. All right. Lynn holds up her axe and a clawed hand and goes, "Don't worry, we 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 got it. We got it. No, we that's, can get it. That's the issue. It's delicate. We can't dig out the ground without breaking it." Heck, okay, I'm you need not small listen. hands. Oh, Stiffy steps up. Oh, I... heck. 
B baby time. Rai's gonna go over to, to Tiffy and just sort of hold his hands out to see which of them has smaller hands and kind of then look at the freaking <laughs> oval shape that is his forearm and hand and then just sort of put his hands down. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah, uh, uh, Tiffy steps forward, the, the blights, like, move as one. There's, like, many of them and they seem to have some kind of, like, plant hive mind or something. You're not quite sure. Uh, but they move as one and they open up a path to the centre of the graveyard and there is... Where's the Blood Bloom Ashwedel? Was this deep crimson? These are rather light purple. Hmm. Pretty. And they go, hmm. the, you need the roots, that's why it's called Curse Root. Okay. Um, sometimes you have very neat stuff in your inventory, but... Today is not that day, huh? Um, Rai reaches into his scarf and he, he pulls out a small shovel. Oh, like a yeah! Scarf. Hell yeah. Heck yeah, kiddo. Um, this okay. is why you're getting adopted. Go ahead and roll <laughs> just straight. Um, this will have to be strength, but I'll let you roll an advantage because the blights are helping you like move the plants out of the way. Oh, strength. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I have to do it. Oh dear. Is it Rai or myself? Uh, oh, whomever, he, can, he can hand over the shovel. Whomever is I'm digging. Just... Whomever is digging. Digging a okay. hole. Digging a oh. hole. I think Tiffy would, would like to try. Hey! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Jesus Christ, child! We take that. That is good enough. So, you managed to very carefully um, dig up some of the roots of the flowers and uh, using the just the edge of the, the shovel, you do manage to cut off the the stems, leaving the roots intact. You gather them up. You beat my needle blight puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> diplomacy wins. Pagan diplomacy. Woohoo! So you guys now <laughs> running back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It Can I be roll noted? survival so we don't get lost? Sure. Will that help? <laughs> sure. Oh. It should be noted, the longer this has gone on, Lynn originally started out pretty gold-coloured. She has gone a bit more russet as this has gone on, because she's a little distressed, but she's not... Like, she's not going to go shifting any second now, but it's like, yeah, this is a lot more serious than she thought it was going to be, and she's she's worried about the shark. Oh. So now, now that you guys have, have gotten to the other side of town, you kind of know the way back. Uh, right, you've managed to lead them quite eh, quite successfully. There's a couple of, of accidental dead ends, but you guys get to the town the square. And... Uh, right, because you're in the front. Make a deck save. Oh, goody. What the peck? Don't you dare hurt my kid. Three. Don't hey, you dare hurt my you kid! Ran sm you ran smack dab into a group of other three other children. And fall flat on your butt. Oh. Oh. I don't think these kids are adoptable. They <laughs> <laughs> joke about that. So oh. the the kids turn around. They go, oh, oh, new people, new people, play a game with us. Uh, sorry, kiddos. We've a uh, time sensitive mission at the moment. We're we're helping out some people. We're helping out the mayor. But the mayor's boring. Play a game with us. Uh... Oh my god, I know what the fuck to do. Tiffy like steps up and just makes like a um like a squeaky voice a squeaky ball sound and then like a ringing sound. Um and <laughs> taps one of them on the shoulder and she quickly tosses the um the root to Rai and runs off. She's trying to communicate that she wants to play tag. Oh pick and fantastic, you funky little kid. So the kid you tapped does indeed chase after you, but the other two are still staring up at the rest of the party looking expectant. Hey. Mm. Lynn hasn't uh... played a game in a long time. She doesn't know how to play. Uh... Uh... Hey. Teal, you got anything? And she's like leaning back a little bit. It's like, you got anything? Because like, I'm pretty sure distractions are a bit of your thing. 
Okay. <laughs> They're like, uh, uh, let me just roll deception to see if, if I can pull this off or not. Please let me. Yes. Hey! <laughs> okay. That's a nat twenty. Fine. Whatever you pull off, you, you, you do it. So yeah, you do not notice the slight, like, slight annoyance in like his usual demeanor, even though like, come on, rude. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So like that's actually what I was. Looking. Yeah. So um. I'm going to. E I was actually looking up things, and the um, uh, the kids. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use prestidigitation to make. What could we do? Uh, what could we do for Halloween kids? Um, if push comes to shove, Harold's going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, um. Because mm, now oh, I have boy. to now I have to come up with something. Uh, da, 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 what can I do for the kids? Uh, just going to do like uh, presentation. Magical fit in our hand. Yeah, so I'm going to create, let's say, like a a nice. Um, what can I come up with? Um, give me a sec. Yeah, I'm going to come to produce like a nice looking toy that looks more like it comes from Hanimas than from Halloween Town to get the kids' attention. And I'm going to ask, and I'm going to, and Till is going to go, well, I could also provide you with this item if you do manage to catch me. And he's going to run in like a different direction from uh, Tiffy. Cool. One of the kids does run after you. The last kid opens his mouth to say something, but is cut off by a crack of thunder. And as you guys look up, because you everyone can hear that, you guys will look yeah. up, even the kids. The sky is going dark. All light from the sun has been blotted out. Okay, that's not good. Oh, peck. Peck. Mm. That's just a communal peck, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Mm. Lynn. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Yeah? You suddenly hear a voice in your head as the scut beast goes, Lynn, you need to get back now. So he walks behind it all. He and he gets cut off with this pained cry. And then silence. Okay, Lynn. All right, Lynn is running. She's who's got the curse root? Is it? Is it? Ryan's got Ryan, it. Ryan's got it. Okay. Yeah. She literally. You see her go like fully russet now. She hasn't shifted, but she is close to it. And she just goes, "Kid, come on now!" And she is gonna grab your hand, and she's just gonna bolt. Like I think this is actually she's gonna cast expeditious retreat, and she's just going to run. Are you going to cool. come out for for uh, Teal and for Tiffy? Yep, yeah, she's as she's running, she's just gonna be All right, there's an attack. We gotta go, we gotta go now. I will allow Amazing. that you guys both hear that. Yeah. Tiffy yeah. just like cunning action bye. <laughs> just, yeah. I'm leaving this child behind now. You leave behind a comical, like dust shaped Tiffy behind as you renew off. That then just falls yeah. to the ground because it's dust. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Teal probably drops the toy at some place to get the child off his back and uh, going to rejoin with the group. And as the child obviously tried to reach it because it's pressed to digitation, mm. the, uh, the item just puffs in a bunch of teal colored sparks. <laughs> nice. Uh so, Lynn, you guys all Lynn is calling rush. for a break. Uh, yeah, sure. We can take a five-minute break. Sure. Works for me. Cool. I'm good. It's probably probably smart, actually. Mm. <laughs> Get a snack or something. 
Lynn wants to pick I'm someone up. up. Lynn wants to pick someone up so bad. <laughs> well. And I like how it's... I, I understand why you said the, the angst rating now, because there is like... Lynn goes to a place, finds people she likes. She's like, yes, these ones are mine. They immediately kill over and are in danger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think Lynn can't have nice things. I'm sorry, Lynn. Aww. Aww. This is one of the most dangerous situations. I, I did actually have to consult uh, uh, Kai on the angst rating because my... Uh, my judgment for that kind of thing is so skewed. <laughs> yeah, no, that's completely fair. Completely fair. Also, I've changed mics, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me a little bit better. Hello. Oh, hey, we got a visitor. We do have hey. a visitor. Hello, Nico. Hey, Nico. We're on break at the moment. Yeah, we're taking a quick five-minute oh, break. My coffee. My tea is empty. I can fix it. And I got chocolate. Hell oh, yeah, we take that. Hey, got chocolate. I didn't know they made white chocolate Toblerone, but here we are. Yeah, they do. Ooh. It's really good. Mm. I mean, Toblerone in general is really good, but like... Yeah, we got one of those like little, like the little tiny ones, like a big multi-pack with the regular, the white chocolate yeah, and the dark yeah, chocolate yeah. ones. And it turns out great, because I really like the white chocolate ones, and my husband really likes the dark chocolate ones. Nice. I so that's convenient. I got one of those in my, my, uh, my bag of... Well, my non-existent bag of little Christmas presents. Fancy dinner gone wrong, Nico. Fancy dinner gone wrong. <laughs> Fan yeah, fancy dinner gone very, very wrong. Yeah, that's the spirit. Cliff Notes version. It was meant to be a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cliff Notes version. There was some. There was some very nice role play. Uh, then the host got poisoned, and is dying. Uh, they ran across town to get the antidote, were waylaid by some kids on their way back, and now the sky's gone dark. The sky's gone dark. I can English. I'm gonna say, if we hadn't been able to get around the kids, Lynn normally likes kids, Lynn would have pulled out an axe. <laughs> it, we haven't got time for this pick and pick. I mean, Shit her first has... response would have been, she was gonna yeet Harold at one of them, just to see if that would help. <laughs> Shit has indeed hit the fan. It, sh it should also be noted. Uh, the the kids' names are Click Tick and Boom. Not, um, fantastic. <laughs> if any of you guys get what their XP's of, I will love you forever. Lock, shock, and barrel. Yep. I <laughs> think it was probably fairly obvious, but. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
So I am now back from my quote unquote Hello. break. <laughs> if everyone is ready to go, then we shall continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So you guys will run back to the mansion. Um, now the the mansion itself, the first room that you look uh, like enter uh, is a small foyer, and then you open it opens up into the actual main. Um, Ballroom. That was the word I couldn't remember earlier. The word was ballroom. Hey! Um, it, yeah, it opens up to the main actual ballroom, but there's windows along the sides that allow you to see into the ballroom. Make perception checks. Ray. If anyone hurts those two people that she cares about, she's going to kill everyone in the room. Um, what type of check is it? Perception? Perception. Cool, cool. Oh my god, number uh, 20 from 10. <laughs> now you're getting there those rolls. Now you're getting those rolls. <laughs> I'm gonna actually use one of my luck points and just go again. Let's see if we can get her. <laughs> well, you yeah, did get her. <laughs> uh, yeah. The good news is, all of you passed the, the first DC. Uh, you, you look into the ballroom, and immediately the first thing that you see is Asclepius. He is knelt on the floor, his hands bound behind him, a gag in his mouth, and he looks furious. He's glaring up at someone with a small trickle of blood pouring, like, just, just running down the side of his face from his temple, or else he's been hit over the head with something. Um, oh, whoever's done that is gonna die. You can't see the throne from where you guys are standing, but judging by the direction he's glaring at, you guess that someone is on the throne. Tiffy, you and Teal both also notice, and you kind of have to tilt your head a little bit to see through the window properly to get a good look at this. Jacques is lying across the floor like he was just thrown like a broken puppet and the blood bloom Ashfidel is starting to like peek out from his sleeves and his collar and the the bottom hems of his trousers none okay, of you guys so, uh, none of you guys can see Dala oh heck um, okay, so Rai is the one who has the cursed root, right? Mm hmm Okay, so yeah, Till is going to turn to the group and say, Okay, Rai, we need the we need the cursed root to Jack now. Lin, if you're so inclined, either come with us or figure out where the peck, the responsible adult that was with us is now. I don't, Lind, you can see her ear twitch. She has listened. She is mainly watching um, Asclepius, though, because like, she wants to peck up whoever has hurt him and Jacques so bad, but she does give a nod. And she's like, okay, I will find the adult. If anything's happened to them, I will deal with that. Can you guys, I mean, Teal, and she is actually speaking this out of respect. She's like, you are good at distractions if there is. Whoever this is, is dangerous, and we've got two kids in our care, and we've got two people in danger. I'm gonna... I'll, fi I'll find the adult, and then after that we need to figure out how to deal with this situation. I'm trusting right you. Right on. Yes. Right. And Lynn's gonna run, because we did, we did get directed earlier, she's gonna run to the room that we were in originally. And she's gone all fours on this one. As you guys open the door, move through the foyer, um, you go to open the door to the ballroom, and there's a loud cackle. Okay. Ryan's going to hiss again. Let's see if I can do this voice. <laughs> it's a distinctive <laughs> voice, I don't think I've quite got it. <laughs> oh, Jax, you fool. I'm really surprised you didn't see this coming. But finally, I'm ruler of Halloween Town now. Things are gonna change around here. 
Oh, we're gonna peck and kill this guy. Okay. Well. All right. Who wants to peck and peck this guy up? Cause um, <laughs> we we got a priority. To, we got to prioritize the people, but peck it. In fact, actually, I'm gonna make a roll for Lynn. Yeah, I I think that at this point, like the Teal just like holds Rye by the hand and just brings him to Jack as fast as possible. Like, come on, kiddo, make your do your magic. We need to figure this out. So you guys are are running into the the ballroom. I'm actually going to cast Pass Without Trace. Probably this time, uh, before we get to the door. Ooh. Hello. Alright, you guys have plus 10 or self checks. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, if if I mess up like this stealth check, I'm really... Like, <laughs> I'm going to... I mean, you've, got a, you've got a plus 10. Same here! You've got a plus 10. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> There We're we all go. making a, uh, okay, look, what is So that? that's, uh, that's, wow, Jesus. So it's a 27 from <laughs> Rye, that is a 36 from Teal. Are you guys 26. all making self checks? Uh, a yep. 31 from Lynn, a 34 from Tiffy. Hello. <laughs> and she's not growling, she was close to, but she's actually just, like, biting her tongue that, so that she doesn't growl. Fair enough. So, yeah. You guys open the door, managing to open it without it creaking. Which is impressive, this is a very old door. And now that the door's open, you can see the throne, and sure enough, the bastardous form of Sir Boggart is sat in it. Go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> Battle! Fight! <laughs> Heck. Uh, <laughs> That's a 20. Alrighty. Ooh, that's an 11. Okay. I don't know if there's anything for this besides. Just the elf. Lynn, Sir Bogart, Rye, Teal. That's that one. Eh. Well, makes sense. All right, cool. Um, so, I will say you guys get a surprise round. So, Lynn, uh, yes, yeah, so you guys can all take one turn. The uh, so we're, won't do anything. So, Lynn, it is your turn. You are first. All right. Let's see. Uh, the ballroom itself, when is it a lead off from there that the um that the uh the dinner the dining hall was? Um, everywhere, every the 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 ballroom has three hallways leading off of it. Um, there's a hallway to the north behind the throne, uh, which you guys were led through the first time you were in here, um, and that leads to uh. Uh, the the back of the house and the back garden. Um, there is a hall to the right, which is the hallway that you guys were led down today, which leads to the dining room um, and some uh, uh, guest bedrooms. And it's a hallway to the left. Jax is on the floor. Um, just just in front of the throne and a square piece is knelt in the middle of the room. Alright. And she can see if she's in the room, she can see the um the throne now, so she can see Saboba? Yep. Alright. 
Lynn couldn't see Jacques before because she didn't roll um, the stealth like no, she nope. didn't roll the perception. Yeah. So you know what? I think whatever like Lynn has been holding on by a thread. She has been stressed. She's got people she cares about in danger again. And much as she she hates her other form, she's gonna lose the battle against it now. Because that is someone she cares about, and you do not pick and mess with people she loves. And she is going to... How far away is Sir Bogart, please, pray tell? The, the ballroom itself is about 200 feet across. Uh, the throne is about 180 feet away from you. She has not got that distance in a go. Ah, uh, let's see. You do. She's self exposition retreat. No, I'm, I'm going to say you don't have expeditious retreat up, but you can call it up if you want. Because that would allow you to dash twice, if you would so choose. Alright. Yeah, she's going to do that. She comes in, and she's going to make herself as big a target as possible, so that the others can also get through just fine. And she howls. And she shifts. And she is now just racing at this... um. At this throne, because, yeah, you, you don't mess with someone she cares about. All right. I don't think I'm going to be able to... I don't think she's going to be able to make it this round, but she's, she's going to come for you. So, well, yeah, you, you're going to get attacked by a very angry wolf monkey. Yeah, no. You, you, won't, <laughs> you won't make it um, over there just yet. You're about halfway across, though. Uh, right, it is your turn. Okay. Rye is, um, can, Rye's going to put Expeditious Retreat up so that he can get over to Jacques and see if he can do something with this, this curse root plant. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say, because you rolled so well on identifying what the, the blood bloom ash of is, you would know that the curse root also needs to be, uh, taken orally, but it works best as a potion. Right. Mm. Um, in that case... Do we have enough that Rai would know that he could just eat it straight and it would work, or does he think that we probably want to get it brewed up first? You probably want to get it brewed up first because brewing it concentrates the effects. Okay. Uh... Also, as a note, in casting Expeditious Retreat, you have dropped Pass Without Trace because they have both concentration. Oh, does it? Yeah. Uh, I didn't read that far. <laughs> okay. It's, it's fine. Well... You guys still have the stealth bonus for now because you already rolled stealth. Uh, you guys mm. are getting a surprise run anyway because after this, he will notice you. Surprise, surprise, but in anyway. the middle of the room, we'll get you supported. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, okay, well then, instead of... Um... I don't know how to do potions, I don't think. Um... He's gonna go over to Asclepius, then. Instead of to, yeah. to Jacques. And... Yeah, you I'm can, gonna can make that. Him. Um, get him to roll his little hammer space. See if he can get a little, little, little knife to cut that rope. Yep. Yeah, he's going to try and cut him loose. Cool. Um, to get over to Escobar's turn, you would have to cast Expedition Retreat, so you can dash the two, the two times to make it ninety feet. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say you can get up to him, uh, and you can pull a knife out ready to cut him loose on your next turn. Cool. All right. So Teal, your turn. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I was also planning on going to Asclepius as well to get him untied. Um, but in this case, um, hmm. uh, I think that I'm going to, since I'm also one and I also have Expeditious Retreat, I'm also going to cast that. To be able to dash twice, to get across, and I'm going to go next to Rai, because like, both to get Asclepius back to in working order, but also because like 
he does remember that last time things didn't get so well for Rai, and he's like partially worried that he doesn't want the kid to be too afraid that the big scary wolf monkey is back. <laughs> like, I mean, he's not as like he's not really worried for himself, but he like he doesn't want the kid to be too terrified about this because like he doesn't know how the the memory linkers with this poor child. I'm so sorry, Rai. I'm so <laughs> big and sorry. That's <laughs> fair. So He'll yeah, make you a pie later. Okay. It should be noted as a rogue, you can cunning action to bonus action dash anyway. Just set up. Yeah. Right. Cool. So we've got two people by club. We just one person trying to run up to uh, Sir Pocket. Tiffy, your turn. Mm. Uh, so a lot happened. It's very fun. Um, yeah, Tiffy doesn't really do the hitting thing a lot. Uh, but she doesn't like this dude. <laughs> What's the consensus of hitting something and then doing a hide action? Uh, I'll allow it. You're, uh, you're a rogue. I think you can hide yeah. as a bonus action. Um, yeah. Let me so, just let me just check that because I have gotten that wrong in the past. Um, uh, kind of action bonus action hide is possible. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. I just know there's a thing about like if you hit something and then try to hide, sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah, you but... would you would have to try and duck behind one of the the columns in the room. Um, okay. but I will let you try it. Um, so from her hammer space, she pulls out, like, a toy cross- uh, not crossbow, a toy bow, a toy short bow, and it's one of the, uh, the arrowhead is not arrowhead, it's the rubber, like, yeah, yeah. ones. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and she's gonna try and fire at, um, this, this, uh, bogget. Okay. As a note, you are firing at disadvantage because you are moving into the long range of, uh, this, this, uh, weapon. So you okay. you can you can make it. The full range on a short bow is 300, 320 feet, but you are firing in the long range, so you would have to roll a disadvantage. Because I don't think you have a okay. uh, uh, sharpshooter. Yeah, hey, oh. that's, that's a one. Oof. Damn. You 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 pull out the bow and go to fire. Uh, you're a little bit rusty. You you go to fire, but you don't quite pull the bow back far enough so the arrow just kind of flops out onto the floor in front of you. Hello. So it should be noted, I'm absolutely just imagining like a nerf bow for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Amazing. Um, I have a wonderful reason why it does do damage when it hits, but it didn't, so she's just got to twirl in that uh, Paper Mario kind of way and then disappear from sight behind the pillar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, we are yeah we're back at the top of the round. Uh, Lynn, it's your turn. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and she's gonna make it this round, isn't she? Yep. To um to Bogot. Yep. She will not be able to attack, however, because she will need to dash twice to do that. All right. Hmm. Can she bonus action? Because there's something she can do, but I don't know whether you you have expeditious retreat up, uh, so you can bonus action as dash and then use your action to do something else. All right, and that would still get me there. Mhm. Mm well, you'd you'd be thirty feet away, but you would be close enough mm. to attack with like a crossbow. Yeah, she's gonna do that. It's just like, oi, picnic. <laughs> oi, picnic. <laughs> Hit. You know, maybe, just maybe, I think it might. But also, you are so lucky because the range on your hand crossbow, the short range, is 30 feet. So you're not rolling a disadvantage. Barely. Uh, so yeah, so go ahead and roll damage on that. That's a six. Six. Okay. Um, I oh, think... Oh, should have added a... Uh, actually, can I... There's something I want to add to this, which was one of the things... Because uh, she's never used a blood maledict or anything before, but I don't know whether I don't know how that works. So okay, uh, so the blood maledict thing, um, the way that works is um, you can invoke a blood curse. Um, mm -hmm. 
So... You can just choose okay, to use it, pick the blood curse that you are using, and you can choose to amplify it. Uh, yeah, you can choose to amplify it if you want, uh, but you will uh -huh. you will roll a Hemocraft die, which I think for you at level 5 is a d6. Yeah, it is. Um, and you will lose that much health, but you will be able to amplify the blood curse. Alright, I'm gonna go with, there's one to blind people, and yeah, she's just gonna try and do that. Are immediately, you... so let's... Yeah, are you amplifying it? Uh, you know what? Yeah. She's, she's angry enough. Yeah, she, so she's never this... done this before. Uh, you need to roll a charisma saving throw, DC 16. Cool. Which, which blood curses do you have, by the way? Uh, I, I, I have one that's blinding. So let me, let me just... You have blood curse of binding. There was one that actually had um blinding. I, I'll just find, like seriously, it blinds you. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, I, I know the Love one that it. you mean, but the one that you have on your sheet is the blood curse of binding, not the blood curse of blinding. Oh, okay, then I shall use that one instead, because that. Okay, so you need to make a roll, and I will also do. Yeah, I take full damage for that. Oof, myself. Oof. So you are down six hit points. Yeah, but as she's pulled it out, she's probably just like scraped her thigh as she was pulling out the arrow to shoot. That's fair. She doesn't care. She just wants this guy. She no, just wants this guy oh, down yeah. and gone. Cool. Alrighty. Cool. So. That's a strength save. Yep, strength saving throw. What is your strength save? So bog it. Plus three. I also just realised this is the first time that um, Tiffy has seen Lynn do this. You do not make it. Cool. Let me just double check what this does then. Speed boost to zero. Can't use reactions. Um, across that's a minute. Create a creature rather. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Roll a strength save. Yeah. Strength Roll a d twenty for me, just really quick. All right. That's an eight. Okay, never mind then. Ominous. <laughs> I just, I also like that Lynn is going to think about this later, but this is the first time that Tiffy and Asclepius have seen this form of hers. And when she thinks about that later, she's not going to like it. But right now, it's just like she doesn't care. She just, she's just T focusing on the threat. Tiffy has seen your, your shifted form. You've shifted in the cornrows. Asclepius hasn't Tiffy seen Tiffy wasn't no. there. Oh, I was, that was there, running from the oh, girl, girl. Right, okay, fair enough. Then. Ryan Teal saw Tiffy hadn't, and that was actually one thing that Lynn was grateful for at the time. But Alrighty. she didn't want this little kid to see the monster. So, uh, so Borgit has noticed and been shot and is not happy. Uh, let me just see how he works. Okay. She gonna do picnic. What's she gonna do? Gonna He's gonna hit summon me? bestial spirit. Peck off. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh -oh. Excuse me. So I need. Uh, I think it is beasts. Let me just double. Yeah, spirit of a beast. So we're just gonna go to the beast area and find a beast. Pick a pet, any pet. Yeah, pick a pet, <laughs> any pet. Do I? Is like it need to stuff. have a certain? Um, it doesn't say what level it has to be, so I'm just gonna pick a. Oh wait, there are certain ones that it does. Never mind. Uh, this is a beast of the land. Oh, Jesus, why is... This is complicated. Okay, cool, that's fine. Uh, this is totally fine. 
cool, cool, cool. So, summons bestial spirit. <laughs> there is now the spirit of the land just in front of you. Um... Cool. And he's going to yell at it. Well, don't just stand there. Charge! And that's what he's doing this turn. It's now this beast of the land's turn. <laughs> so it's going to charge at you, uh, uh, Lint. So... More... Oh, why is this all with this? So, there is going to be a perpetual growling from Lynn now. 22, that hits. Um, oh, yeah, that hits. So it's 1d8 plus 5 plus 1d6. 13, you take 13 points of slashing damage. Right. Um, make a strength save. Alright. Strength save. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. That would just be, I think that would just be three. Fifteen. Oh, oh. Okay. As the beast charges you, uh, it hits you with a mighty blow, and you almost fall over from the force of it, but you just barely manage to get your claws underneath you, and... Uh, brace against it. You are not knocked prone, yeah. thankfully. Uh, We've all seen better days. Probably. But yeah, okay, sorry. That, that is Sir Bonnet's turn. Rai, it is your turn. Cool. Uh, Rai is going to try and get Asclepius loose from his bonds. Um, how would you like me to do that? Hmm. Um. Roll a straight dexterity check. That's oh, you just I rolled a twenty. I, you didn't roll. Uh, <laughs> I hate when oh, I do my that. Goodness. Okay, so it's a struggle. These are tough, tough cords, tough corded rope. Um. You, the knife catches a couple times, but you just get mad and yank it, and though you're not very strong, you do manage to actually sever the entire rope. Uh, Hooray! So Hooray! You've, you've cut the knot open. Um, still gagged, but he, he's not bound anymore. Cool. Am I um, able to, to ungag him as well? Um, I'll allow it. Okay. He's going to ungag him. Bonus. Damn it. Honestly, that makes sense. Alright, cool. You ungag him. He is upset. But he gives you Valid. he gives you a, a thankful nod. I got I got the, the thing at the Gotta make a potion with it. The the fur on the back of his neck is raised because he's so fucking angry, but his shoulders slump a little with relief. Yeah, he's going to um, offer the the curse route to Asclepius. Because Ryan's a bright kid, but I, he has never made potions before. That's so valid. Asclepius will take it with a with a, a thank you. So Teal, it is your turn. It is. Um, just looking at. Okay, so uh, um, hmm. Okay, so we have this beast. Uh, I'm going to. So how f how far is the spirit of the land from me? Um, sixty feet. Sixty feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use my cunning action uh, 60 feet. Yeah, I'm going to use my um, cunning action to dash to the spirit. And then I'm going to use the oh so kindly gifted brooch of phantasm to cast fear on the damn thing uh, so that it may like move away. Let me of, check a like, thing. 30 feet fear cone. Or fear. Yeah. So there's cool sphere as well, which is one person, and then there's fear, which is a 30 foot cone. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, uh, depends on like if Lin would be caught in the cone or not. Because like, I'm gonna I say would... if you put yourself beside Lin, which I say you can do with the six feet dash. Yeah, Lin will not be caught in it. Yes. Yeah, so, however, that's, that was the... Sir Bogart will be. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that was the plan. So like, I'm going to use. To just join side with Lin save. and then use the brooch save. to save. cast here. So it's fine. It's a sixteen for the beast of the land. And what is that passes, doesn't it? I think it does. I think it's a DC fifteen. And <laughs> so Bogart does not pass. <laughs> Get wrecked. Yeah. So he should be scared. I must he should be scared with what a friend. Must see that. Okay, good to know. I don't know if it will last, but good to know. Um, actually, let me just check. Make sure he's not got anything that pre prevents fears. Teal is wonderful and I love him. Lynn is warming up to him. <laughs> if, she, if she wasn't stuck in her own head at the moment, it would be just like, yeah, you would be getting a smile, but right now she's just focused on this thing. But yeah, cool. you're good. So Teal will maybe not get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was going to yeah. do worse than that. So, um, yeah, Teal, you, you cast this, this image and the beast seems unaffected, but um, you can you can see the the wicked grin on Sir Bogart's face morph morph into a terrified grimace. <laughs> huh. like the pasta deserves. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he so deserves it. Seriously, why would you hurt these wonderful, wonderful, spooky husbands? Who is anyone stood by the door still? Uh, oh, do you think's the closest? I think. Uh, yeah, I'm the closest. I hid behind the nearest pillar. Okay. Okay. God damn. <laughs> Wow, those are not good rolls. Uh, so... So, 12, 22, and 11. Did any of those hit, Tiffy? Um, I, the 22 definitely hit, so let me check about the 11. I do not believe. Yeah, the 11 doesn't hit. Does the 12 hit? Oh, the 12 doesn't hit, no. Okay, cool. So you really take one of these attacks, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so that's that plus... Okay. Okay, you take 11 points of damage as three daggers are suddenly shoved in your direction, and one of them managed to catch you across the shoulder. Ah, I'm going to uncanny dodge that one. Thank you. That's fair. Um, as, you, as you uncanny dodge and spin around, um, you can see the three kids that waylaid you before. 
Oh. Looking. I put this hand out like I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> The emotional betrayal oh, hurts so much more than the knife wound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got it. I'm really glad then. Rai was going to give them one of his toys, but I'm glad he didn't. They don't deserve <laughs> it. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They do not. So this that's is one their of the turns. Days when we're gonna beat up a kid. That's yeah, that's their turns. You are now flanked by a pillar and three kids. <laughs> but it is your turn now. It sure is. Um I don't want them here. <laughs> I I don't I don't want them here. I'm just gonna now look. Um I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to use the brooch as well. Um and cast fear as well. <laughs> Cause I just want them gone. Okay. <laughs> but because... she just like flashes the brooch like a badge. Okay. Because of the way they're positioned, I'll say you can only get two. Um Okay. I don't remember what they're the good thing is, they all have the same character sheet. Because I can't be bothered to make three individual little kids. The bad thing is, I don't remember what the save is for fear. <laughs> I think it's a wisdom save. Uh, it's a DC 15, 15, I think. Yeah. I mean, like, what ability am I It's wisdom. Okay. Good uh, to know. So they only have a plus one to this. That one doesn't make it. That one does. That one makes it. So the one in the middle reels back, terrified. Uh... I like to think it's the one she played with. Yeah. Yeah. Get wrecked. <laughs> Boom is looking very upset right now. But click and tick look pissed. Uh-oh. Ooh, well, um... Bye. Disengages. <laughs> just runs away. That's so Ooh. valid, Chief. Alright, so you just shove Boom out the way and run. And because you disengage, they don't get to attack you. Yeah. It's now a Sclepius' oh, yeah, turn. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I don't. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but a Sclepius is a grave cleric, and oh. one of the spells the grave clerics get, uh, in their subclass, is blight. <laughs> so a Sclepius, a Sclepius stands with a face like thunder and goes, "You hurt my husband. I cannot forgive that." Twenty. That's a three. That is a Dang. three on the Constitution save against Blight, and because Sir Boggart is a plant monster, he oh, takes full damage. Bad. So he takes sixty-four points of necrotic damage. Oof. Oh my he only God. has fifty-six hit points maximum. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, don't piss off Asclepius. Don't do it. It's not conducive this to your health. This is why it was a good idea to look on time. Yeah, no, you did exactly <laughs> the right thing. Uh, so... <laughs> Asclepius just... Man. Asclepius just... holds up his, his, his pendant with the rose motif uh, on a gravestone. And... Teal and Lin, because you guys are closest... The the bear spirit vanishes. You guys can see oh the instant the spell hits because Sir Boggart screams and writhes and this swarm of of spirit like insects bursts from him instinctively. But the the sackcloth stitches become undone and <laughs> It falls open, and you can see the plants inside him blighting and decaying, becoming desiccated and fading to dust. And the sackcloth drops, and it's just a pile on the floor. Wow. <laughs> Asclepius is now immediately running for his husband. 
Tiffy, from behind you, you hear three simultaneous cries of, Dad! No! <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh -oh. Hey, Todd. <laughs> this uh, look of surprise on Tiffy's face. My friend can beat your dad, apparently, to <laughs> death. <laughs> <laughs> It should be noted, those, um, those spirit bugs are still around. He's not dead, but he is thoroughly out of play. Uh, um, hmm. Okay, that is awesome. And we <laughs> love Asclepius. We love him with all of our hearts. May his anger never be pointed at us. <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Lynn, it's not your turn. <laughs> yeah. Alright, is there anything for Lynn to attack? Because you... The kids. They're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's considering it. Oh, this is absolutely terrible. She is actually considering it. Because the thing that was making her most angry is now gone. But she's not done. Tell you what... Let's see, how far away are the kids? Um, they're still by the door, ba so about 180 feet. I think Lynn's not gonna run yet. She's gonna turn, and it is just... I hope these kids are looking, because there is... There is a giant pecking wolf, and it is still growling, and it is turning to face them. And I think she's going to use this as a warning of if they don't leave, she is going to come over there and they are going to regret it. Because she isn't playing today. I'm going to say roll intimidation. Mm -hmm. What's my intimidation? What's my intimidation, folks? Da -da -da -da. If I don't do well, I'm going to use a luck point. That's a 15. Let's... Let's use that luck point. That's a nine. 19. Nice. nice. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna just... I'm gonna just... Roll... That's not the right sheet. Twenty. Okay. So... They are caught up in their grief, but they do manage to notice you and realize the threat that you are presenting. What they gotta do? What they gonna do? Oh wait, we should well, probably Well, it's not their turn. Round, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, is that your whole turn? Are you gonna do anything else? Ah. Uh... Let's see, Sclepius has got... She can't do anything for him, and honestly, I think it's better that she stays away from Jacques, because if she loses it, she's more of a hindrance than a help, and she hates that, but there's nothing she can do. I think she's going to prowl forward. It's like she's not going to do an expedition retreat or anything, but she is just prowling forward, so she's going to use her movement to go back the way she came. All right. Cool. Uh, so, Rai, it is now your turn. Um, Rai is going to follow Asclepius over to Jacques in case he can help. Um, he's also kind of half keeping an eye on Lynn, and um, he uh, I can I prepare a spell and then use it as like a reaction? So you can hold an action, um, mm. the the way holding action works, especially for spells, is you say the spell that you're holding, and you say the trigger you're waiting for. If that trigger doesn't happen before your next turn, then that spell is wasted. Cool. Alright, well in that case, he's going to prepare uh, an Entangle, and it's going to go off if Lynn loses it. That is a good idea, because she's going to be near Tiffy. Oh, Peck, she hasn't thought of that. Well, and I she's mean, not going to think guys, of that. You got, there's still 150 feet of room between Lynn yep. and 
the kids. Huge. There's 120 feet of room between Lynn and Tiffy. Because Tiffy, move. <laughs> you, you gotta move, Tiffy. You're, you're gonna have to move eventually. But, yeah. So to be fair, cool. the last time he saw Lynn do this, she attacked him. So he's like, yeah, that's I don't true. know how far away she is. I'm just going to make sure that's I true. can pin her. But yeah, um, so he's just going to prepare true. that. And um, other than that, he's just going to um, follow Asclepius to make sure he can be close by if there's something he can do to help. Okay, good to know. Uh, Teal, your turn. Uh. In this case, considering that there are already people attending to Jacques, I'm going to use again the cunning action to just dash and go back to the kids because even though like he did play a trick on them mostly to get rid of them, like now he's like, okay, you've duped me even more than I duped you and I do not appreciate that. <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, so you get 90 feet across the room toward them. There's no 60 feet between the yep. two. Uh, it is their turn. Uh, Boom, as per the spell fear, must run 30 feet away from Tiffy uh, and choose to do so in such a way that there's a column between the two of them because a scary, scary person. Um, <laughs> fear the child. Which does actually break the, the, the fear because that's how that works. Um, Minus eight. Tick and Click are angry, they're upset, they're grieving because they think their dad is dead, and also their brother is terrified. So they're, they, they recognize they're in kind of a shit situation, and they're like, you're gonna pay for this, all of you! And they grab their brother and they, they cutting action and, and dash out of the, out of the building. Oh good, we're not going to see Lynn maul some kids. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Yeah, don't worry, we can hunt them down later. God. It's at this moment that Della, you managed to find your way out of the basement just in time to see three kids running out the door. And you, you look, in, look into the throne room where they came from and... <laughs> Asclepius is running toward his husband, who is just lying across the floor. This is not the room they were in previously. The, the four of you guys are back, except there's only three of you and a giant wolf. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> did I did oh dear, did I remember what happened before I got knocked out and put in the basement? Or you weren't like... knocked out and put in the basement. Asclepius asked you to go get some towels, and, and the linen storage is in the basement. But he neglected to mention that the basement is a fucking labyrinth. Uh, so it took you this long to find the linen closet and come back. Sick. I feel like she grabbed, she somehow found a drink in the basement as well, so she just walked out with a drink. <laughs> and I was like, oh. well, I mean, there is a wine cellar down there. Yeah, just paused with the drink in her hand, with this wolf, a pile of ash. That guy's worse, and he's pissed. Children are running away. Max hysteria. And she just kind of turned her head at Tiffy, like, is this good? Tiffy doesn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I'd, say for, I'd say now we can trip out of initiative order, because there's no more enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Asclepius is going to hold the root out to Rye and go um, down the left, down the left coal, uh, corridor. There's a a a room room. I've already set everything up. Just put it in. Okay. Um. Right. Rye is gonna. How many times can you use Expositious Retreat? I can't remember. Um, if, you, if it's the Toon Kind race thing, then it's three times. Sweet. So he's going to use it again and go, Phew! off to do that. Hooray! Cool. So, is anyone joining you? Oh, uh, probably uh, Dala and... Uh, no, I feel like Dala's got to stay with the wolf, actually. Like, what the hell is this? That's fair. 
Um, but Tiffy's gonna run off to the cooking because I don't want to be near the wolf. Um, and this, I want to help. I want to help fix uh, Jacques. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh, you go first. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I'm going. Okay. Uh, Lynn gives a final growl at the door, and then she prowls back, and she's gonna. She probably hasn't got enough um, distance to be able to investigate the semi body of Saboga, but she's just gonna. Actually, how much distance would it be? She's. She's at one fifty. Yeah. So. She's going to dash and make her way back over to Jacques and Asclepius and stuff, and she's going to stay in between them and the throne, and she's still in wolf form. I don't think she's even realised that she can shift back. She's still in danger mode. And she's just going to make sure there's no more threats, because she doesn't want these guys getting hurt. That's fair. Teal, what are you doing? Yeah, I was going to say, Teal, uh, since he doesn't really have any disposition with potions he's just going to stay with Lin because like again he's not like overly concerned but still like slightly just to make sure that nothing goes awry like he doesn't act like actively fear that she's going to rampage everyone but like just in case that's fair okay so teal uh not teal uh tiffy and rye you guys run into the left corridor um there's a few closed doors, but, um, uh, what's your guys' passive, uh, oh, you got passive perception on the wazoo, Tiffy, holy crap. Uh, yeah, so Tiffy, you definitely notice, and, uh, yeah, right, you've got high enough too. You guys notice there is a one open door on the left-hand side of the corridor, like, halfway down. Mm-hmm. Um, as you guys, as you guys run over and take a look in, it is... You know in in cartoons where they show like some scientist lab and they've got big setups full of different beakers and distilling pipes and like sp spinny loopy pipes that do stuff and it all drips into different beakers and they go into one another. It's not that. <laughs> it's like that. Sweet. Uh, Amazing. But Tiffy, you notice at one end of the setup there is a beaker full of clear liquid. Uh, on a tripod over a Bunsen burner uh, with a pestle and mortar next to it. Okay. Um, God. The Bunsen burner is not currently lit. Okay. Uh, Tiffy gets out some goggles and um, gloves because uh, TV 13 ratings show <laughs> it takes that you must do wear proper equipment when on TV and dealing with dangerous equipment. <laughs> Always wear the same Ryan equipment, guys. Have... Ryan does not have any PPE. He's not going to be wearing PPE. Oof. Um... <laughs> okay. Um, can Ryan roll... Can I argue for medicine to figure out what he's supposed to do? Um, yeah, medicine or nature. Um, I'll... Well, they're the same roll. I'll say you can roll them both, so just roll twice. <laughs> okay, groovy. I'm I'm happy with that. There you go. Fourteen and a twenty-two. I like that. Okay, That's so my boy. Whoop, whoop. your nature check tells you that um that root is not going to fit in the beaker as is. Your medicine check tells you, oh hey, I can mash it up in the pestle and mortar and then put it into the beaker. Cool. Uh, he's going to try and do that. You, you walk up to the counter. You are about eye line with the countertop. So you, uh, you can grab the pestle and mortar, but it, it is higher than you are if you want to use it while it's on the counter. You guys are short. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, he no. Reach, if he can reach the mortar and pestle, he's just going to put it on the floor and do it on the floor. That works too. Aww. Is there a just step stool? Like sitting on the floor doing it. You can look for a step stool. Go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus that one. All right. Yeah, you find a step stool. Uh, just yeah, just twenty-three. <laughs> Holy crap! You find a step stool. You find a step stool real easy. 
Yeah, and then she's just going to stand on it. And do you know how the Bunsen burner has the little slot that makes it go even hotter or colder? Yep, she's just the... fucking playing with that. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, oh. Well, the good news is the gas tap is not currently on because it's, <laughs> Im- it's improper lab oh, no. improper lab technique to leave a gas tap on when you're not in the room. Especially if you're not like that burning the gas. Um, yep, so you're just opening the vent and closing the vent. <laughs> Just waiting for it to be mashed. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, well Rai's gonna use the mortar and pestle to prep the, the, the corpse root and then get it into the the setup. Cool. Yeah, so you managed to do that. Now the issue comes of how do we light this? Uh Rai's got produced flame. That works! Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I will say with that. I'll, I'll say with the perception roll you just did, Tiffy, you managed to uh, identify where the gas tap is as well. Um, oh, nice. So the two of you working together, you managed to light the Bunsen burner and get the whole thing distilling. And again, with the cartoon, it it bubbles, it boils, the liquid changes color, and steam flows into the thing and moves around, condenses, moves into another beaker, changes color again moves into the next speaker, more colors, and it all drips down into a vial at the end. Um, and that fills this up- whole process, Rai's just sort of tapping his little tiny foot, just going, come on, so slow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cartoon, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it does eventually drip into a vial at the end, and after uh, a minute or so, you have a full vial of the antidote. Cool. Rai's gonna take it and phew, back the other way. Yep. Hell yeah. Little guy go new. So at this point, um, while that's been happening, Escabius has made it to his husband and has rolled Jacques over so that he's not just a loose limp pile of bones on the floor. Um, so Teal and Della were standing nearby, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They're sort of just looking at this site because it's unfortunate, but also ah, true love. How she once had that sipping on her fucking <laughs> wine. <laughs> just tell her just stood there with a oh, glass no. of wine, like ah, oh, true love. While Asclepius is crying over the dying yeah, body yeah. of his husband, <laughs> she, glancing between the left corridor and his husband's body, like come on, come on, come on. Looks at the wolf. Looks at Teal. Nods. <laughs> <laughs> yep, same shit yeah, as always. I, like, if, even with his usual demeanor, Till is visibly confused. <laughs> <laughs> like um, I'm not, I'm not even going to roll deception because like this is like too much to handle. <laughs> like Dala, please. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I will say Till right now. Will lean over. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. That's for, it in for those of you, for those of you listening to the audio recording, I just posted a, a GIF of Obi Wan with the caption "Visible confusion." That's it. I'll, pro- I'll probably link it <laughs> anyway. Um, I will say, Dali will lean over at some point and said, "So, where did the monkey go? Did she run off or?" <laughs> <laughs> Lynn's still growling, by the way. She has not stopped growling this entire time. She's assuming somebody like like magically conjured that wolf and is just waiting for it to dissipate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean like Karen. Again, Teal is taken aback by how kind of like not oblivious to the situation she is, and he will just like silently no, then point at Lynn. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, I, I, oh, fun! You are a rogue, aren't you? Can, I'm just, just for fun, make a history check. <laughs> oh, uh, let me just. Ooh, I'm curious. Yeah. Um, we are doing eyes emoji. We are, we are curious. We want to see. Give us the history beat. check. Uh. Should be this. Oh God! Oh, nat no. twenty. That's a nat twenty. Um, yeah, you deaf dollar, dollar, dollar. Yeah. Hmm. 
you've heard those combinations of names before and you are pretty sure you either have been in contact with Dala in a third person sort of um, communication. You've never met her, but you know she's dealt with the kind of work that you do. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's... <laughs> curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. That... yeah. <laughs> he, he, I think that at the realization, he, he won't say anything because she doesn't seem to have said anything. But like, just like the slight, like... Eyes narrowing, not like in a super obvious way, but like still like. Uh. So this is the site that Tiffy and Rai come upon as they noom <laughs> out of that corridor. <laughs> noom. <laughs> noom. Oh, I love these kids. Do you have I love the ones? Over? Ones are great. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, no, he's gonna he's gonna run over and 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 hold it up, in, holding it in both hands, just holding it up towards Asclepius. He's going, we got it. That's fair. Uh, Asclepius will take it, and his hand is shaking slightly because he's very worried. But he gently, ever so gently, um, sits down. Like he was kneeling before, but now he shifts to be sat cross-legged, um, leaning Jacques up against one leg and carefully tips the vial. Um, into his mouth uh, so that he drinks the potion. There's a long moment. No visible change. And Asclepius just bows his head and presses their foreheads together and his shoulders start to shake again. Tiffy, you notice it first. The flowers start to wilt. Just slowly, the ones in his ribcage. And then it spreads out, they all start wilting and crumbling away and turning to ash. The, the cracks in his bones start healing over, but not fully. They're about as bad as they were when you first met. Possibly worse. There's a tremble throughout Jacques' frame before a hand, slowly and trembling, reaches up and clasps the back of Asclepius' head. Um, Asclepius himself, like, like looks back a bit, uh, crying, shocked, before a, a relieved, grateful almost grieving grin breaks out across his face and he surges in to kiss his husband. Rai is going to slowly <laughs> sit down and then go poom, backwards onto the floor. <laughs> That's a fair reaction. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Tiffy has a very peanuts esque, like wiggly grin at that because she's glad everything turned out all right. She was getting a little teary eyed. Yeah. Till, Till um, is going to, to like lean to Della and say, Now, if you had waited for your commentary just a few moments, this would have been much more appropriate. <laughs> 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 Ni- neither <laughs> neither Jacques nor Sclepers are paying attention to any of the rest of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jacques, like, Valid. brushes a thumb against the blood that's slowly drying on the side of Sclepers' head and goes, Someone hurt you. Sclepers just goes, That doesn't... That doesn't matter. You <laughs> fool. Starts to fumble your hammer space. What do you accidentally pull out? (laughs) I just found out that this channel has the hammer space pin, which is really good. She pulls out a dancer's outfit. She probably pulls out like a baddie outfit. Don't do this fucking charade again. (laughs) God, what's the one? Rubber chicken. Rubber chicken. chicken. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) <laughs> I think you have to get above a five as well on foils. Yeah, I do. <laughs> this is just too long. <laughs> it's the 
just <laughs> no, <laughs> half full canteen of what? I don't know. <laughs> half full canteen. It's <laughs> or half empty. Who it's, knows? God. It's it's Lynn's half full oh, canteen of coffee. It's, <laughs> it's incremental. <laughs> incremental. That's a free. It was a one, a two, a three, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> TV just should have going kapunk. No, no, free me. That's a two. Free me. That's another it's team. Not <laughs> yeah. <There you> <laughs> I think that was the longest fumble truck in, in the history of this game. It's a one, kind of game two, so far. three, four, five, four. six attempts. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy what? shit. Oh. I think and at this point everyone line. is just looking at Tiffy as, as they pull out just <laughs> item after item out of their pocket. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god! And at that, Tiffy pulls out a, uh, a a potion with a nice blue bow tied around the the neck of it. It's the Mystery Owls potion that she bought from Glop's store with her pocket money. It was a gift oh. she was going to give to the <laughs> Chucks because <laughs> oh, she knew that the, the that the bandages the bandages didn't work last time, so she got something better. Oh, oh Tiffy, we love little you. cotton socks. This is the cutest thing ever. That is adorable. <laughs> they they both kind of laugh at that, and like, because Jacques is not particularly physically strong right now, even for him. Uh, so Asclepius will reach over and take it, and they both have amused but grateful grins. Oh. Thank you very much, dear. Oh, she just lets up for a few chimes cheapishly. I'm so distressed. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I need to recover. It's, it's <laughs> fine. I, I had a sneaky suspicion this would happen. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, jeez, this is adorable. <laughs> right, still just about- lying on the floor. <laughs> Can sure. I just not roll real quick? Sure. What's twenty five? Right. Yeah. Lynn has been watching all this, and the growling finally stopped. She she still hasn't changed back though, and she's just she's relieved at this. She's gonna check out Sir Bogart, like what's left of him, because mm. she's st- no matter what she is still in threat mode. She has not been able to knock herself out of it yet. There is just. Too much has happened in too short a time, and she still doesn't feel safe. That's fair. I don't even think I don't even think she actually knows that she's shifted. She does not. She Lynn actively does not remember shifting. She just did. So fair enough. Um, so <laughs> yeah, go go ahead and roll uh, investigation. I suppose uh, that was what that role was. Oh right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 25. Yeah. Um, the the sackcloth is, like, unharmed, because it's not plants. The plants inside have mostly withered away, but there is one clump. Um, it seems to be, like, growing out of a stone of some description. Uh, that is still hale and hearty. Um, and it is... It's small, but you can see it growing before your eyes. Um, not fast, but given enough time, maybe 20-30 minutes, uh, Sir Bogart will regenerate. Alright, Lynn is gonna... She's going to put her claws over it and she's going to try and rip it up. Because no, you, you're not. You've hurt someone she cares about. You are not getting back out of this. At which one... point uh, Escapius yeah. will go, wait, hold on. He needs to see justice. 
Lynn is just, she's gone still, and she's completely silent. She's still got her claws on it, but she is listening, but it is a very close thing. She's not going to take her paw off of this, but she is listening. We have to be better than him. He will see justice. He will pay for what he has done. That I can promise you, personally. But we're not going to kill him. He's not going to get out of this. She takes a very deep <clears throat> breath. And she does take her claws off. And instead of doing that, she comes over and she just flops it's still in wolf form and she just flops just slightly to the side of you guys she's she's going to keep herself in between that thing and you guys but yeah good job you very much avoided something that she wasn't ever going to be able to come back from oh dear <laughs> you stuck oh. my <laughs> my mother puzzle <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Jacques, Jacques does let out a little bit of a, a, a stressed giggle um, looking <laughs> looking around at all the people uh, Rai on the floor Lynn on the floor Della with her, her glass of wine and just like <laughs> looks looks up at uh, Asclepius and goes uh, do you think we have time for dessert still? I remember a very good pie. Oh, to which Asclepius just stares at his husband like, Are you joking? What? <laughs> are you You are lying in my arms. You almost died. He's saying this all, by the way. You are lying in my arms. You almost died. And all you can think about is pie. <laughs> He just, like, tips his head back with the most long-suffering look. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nat 20 for something. Yeah. Lynn has finally clocked that she's still in wolfish form, and because of that very nice comment about the pie, she laughs, and she actually shifts back. She's still on the floor. She's still very much russet, but she is just now like, it is pecking good pie. <laughs> She's hysterical, but yet yeah, you've you've knocked her out of it. Hooray! She'll deal with the trauma later. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Still, wow. love you guys. Still long suffering. Asclepius will go. <sighs> All right, who wants pie? Ryan is going to put a hand up like, I would like <laughs> pie. Dala also raises a hand. <laughs> yeah, and Jill, Jill like... Raises an arm. Jill, yeah, a bit confused, but like, shrug and... <laughs> shrug and <laughs> raises an arm too. <laughs> so valid, <well>, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's just hysterical laughter everywhere, I'm pretty sure, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's a good point to just zoom out from. <laughs> and we'll leave that there. Are <laughs> <laughs> they you cut out for a second there? Uh yeah, we'll, we'll we'll zoom out on that rather nice image. I cannot hear anyone. Oh, oof. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a time for what a time for the uh... cast meanwhile at this last moment. <laughs> no. I'm back. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm back. I can hear you all. What a okay, what a good time yeah. for the technical difficulties right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've got the gift. I've got the gift. You just do, do. All right. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm back. I heard them um, fade out, and then it literally faded out. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, I, I think it's a good point to to pan out from as everyone is kind of semi hysterically or fully hysterically laughing, and people are getting pie. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> I hope I didn't break Woo! your hearts too bad. <laughs> I realized I'm a fool and forgot to have you guys actually get things that you're getting from this. So, uh, as, as you guys are eating pie, uh, Escapius will uh, go into a side room really quick 
and then come out and he's holding four sat sacks, four little satchels, and um he's got he's got a key ring in the other hand with four identical keys on. And they look like this. Uh and he says these are what we use to get to other places fast. Um, if you put this into a door, uh, then turn the key, as if you're unlocking the door, uh, the key will remember what door this is, and then you can open it and it will open up into the manor. Uh, and then you can use the, the manor's front door to reinsert the key and then get back to where you were. Uh, I can only store one door at a time, though. So. Ooh. Wait, to yeah. the manor? Yeah, yeah, to, to the manor. He's given us a key to his house? Yes. Yes, he has. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lena, Lena adores him. Like, seriously, this is... She is yeah. so touched by this. You also all get 30 gold. Oh, this is going to be incredible. <laughs> you also all get 30 gold. Oh, yeah! <laughs> You got paid, yeah. you had a nice dinner, <laughs> and you got the key to this Ooh. dude's house. <laughs> to these dude's house. Raj just sort of um, puts the bag of coins on the table and just sort of prods it like he's really not sure what to do with it. <laughs> Chill One doesn't he have a gleam in his eye when he oh sees this. <laughs> Lin is going to be using this. It's just like... Lydia's going to be using this so much. This is, I think we know how some things are going to come up later on because <laughs> she, she's now got a little retreat that she can go to. And it's in a place where people can possibly handle her better. This is... This is good. As a note, when Asclepius is handing Teal his key, he leans in real close and goes, we know where everything is in this house. Just as a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> At that, I'm going to say at that, I will have to roll deception. Like, <laughs> where's the stat block gone? Okay, it's a plus five. Oh. 22. Oh, yeah, he holds on. But Whoa. I know they have, they have wicked high passive perception. They so do have I'm just going to say, perception. like, they notice how well she's trying to hide it. That but There's that slight hint of disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that. 